Hello there, this is Sherry Hayes with MomDelights.com and today we are continuing reading through McGuffey's Eclectic Second Reader and we're going to do lessons 7 through 9. As I've talked about before, this is McGuffey's original second reader. And if you want to go through my videos and you'll find the introduction and what I think about this book and everything in one of my videos. So I'm just going to go ahead and we've already done through lesson six, The Kite Lost. So I'm going to continue through and I'm going to start with lesson seven. So lesson seven, let's start, go through the words and there's a number of them here. Let's see, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 9, 10, 11. I think there are like 44 words, which is a lot, and you can break these up if you're doing copying with my lesson pages or my lesson books. Um, you can break this up in a couple days if that's a lot for your child to do, but there's so many cool things in here. For one thing, there are the ing words. There's watching, jumping, trying, and here's thing, and here's play thing. So there's a whole bunch of ings in there. Those are fun. There are a couple, there are a number of, um, a specific noun, so they're, they're proper nouns that need capitals, such as Smith, Alfred, and Emma. Those all need capitals because they're specific nouns. They're called proper nouns, okay? Then we have, let's see, we have these words, which are kind of interesting. Let's see, we have laugh, and laugh has a weird thing because it says, the GH says f. So you can laugh and graph and um, cough. You can go over those things. And here's bought, thought, and might. So these all have G-H-T, but you don't say the G-H-T, you don't even hear it. So so it's bought, thought, and might. So those are interesting. Then you can think of might, night, uh, flight, and her thought, and bought, and I'm, let's see, caught is one of those words. So they have those, and those are very interesting. So those are some interesting things within these words. Uh, there's a compound word or two here, such as play, things, Sorry about the noise, people are upstairs. Without, you see, without, there's a compound word, right? Okay, uh, summer. Now, summer is a short vowel, so you double the consonant before you add the prefix. So that makes it summer. Otherwise, if you have one M, it's sumer, right? Okay, then we have, let's see, uh, that's another, let's see. This is self with ish on the end, even though it looks like it says fish. It's self with ish. Right, so that's a suffix on there, not not a compound word. Let's see, here's others like other, brother, mother. Let's see, I think those are like the main interesting things. You can pull more out of this as you read along. So let me let me read this lesson. Okay, so you can see in this, you can ask a child, what is happening in this picture? You can see that there's three children, and you, and it, you know you can count them, and you can talk about the landscape. You know, this is a woodcut uh, engraving, so it's. A little, little less refined than the um, metal engravings, but it's still kind of cute and kids like it. So the cat and ball. So we can see there's a cat. Where's the ball? Do we see a ball? I don't know if we can see a ball or not. Maybe your children can see it. I don't see a ball. Okay. One fine summer day, Mr. Smith took his children with him to a toy shop and bought them many new playthings. Emma chose a neat willow basket. John was most pleased with a cup and ball, and Alfred chose something that we shall mention in another story. When they came home, they sat down under an apple tree in the garden and began to play with the cup and ball. The cat was sitting behind a rose bush, watching the little birds on the trees. As soon as Puss saw them trying to catch the ball in the cup, she thought that she could join in the sport. So she left watching the birds and crept slyly along to watch the ball in the string. Emma was tossing the ball and trying to catch it oftener than her brothers had done. She did not see the cat till Puss leaped into her lap and seized the string and ball. It made them all laugh very heartily to see her sit and watch the ball as she would a mouse or a bird and then leap after it into Emma's lap. Puss tried once to carry it away, but they all agreed that this was wrong. They showed her that she might have her share of the sport, but must not spill, spoil theirs. I have seen some boys and girls who were like this selfish cat, 
They could never see any playthings without wanting them. When they were playing with others, they wanted to have all the play and let the others look on and praise them. Ah, so there's a lot to learn. This is like a little character lesson in this, isn't it? So anyway, as you read, you can talk about, you know, their experiences with cats and how cats like to play. And then you can talk about, like, this character issue that's coming up. You know, you've got to give a place for others to have fun. And then you can sit back and enjoy when it's your time. You can have your fun if you're willing to give others the chance to have their fun and not interfere. So that's really good. Okay, lesson eight about the beaver. Now, this is going to be interesting. Not just for the reading itself, but because this is kind of a lesson in history for us, isn't it? It used to be that they used to make beaver hats, and so beavers were very important for their pelts because they made them, you know, that's what they used for the hats. So, interesting, we'll find this out. It's kind of quaint. It's not something we would, like, uh, advocate in these days necessarily, but it's interesting. About the beaver. The beaver is about two feet long and one foot high. It is a light brown color, and its fur is very fine. Few animals show a greater degree of wisdom than the beaver. When summer comes, a great many beavers get together and build their houses. They have rooms to their houses. And that's really cool. Like, what you could do with this is you could actually watch a video about the beavers, and that would be a lot of fun. I think that's what I did with my kids. We, we went on YouTube and we watched videos about how beavers build their houses with rooms. It was so fun. When a beaver has no one to help him, he cannot do much. Sometimes 200 beavers live together. Can you count to 200? Then you could stop and get out a 100 sport and try to count to 200. <laughs> the beaver has a tail as flat as a shingle. He uses his tail for a trowel. Do you know what a trowel is? You might not explain what a trowel is. Did you ever see a mason use his trowel? Will you show me how he used it? And then you can have them show them. You could watch a video on that too because that's some, not something we think about too much these days. The beavers cut down very large trees with their teeth. They make their houses of wood and mortar. A beaver can live in the water and he can live out of the water. Beavers like to build their houses close to a river or pond. Their fur is used to make hats. Okay, so that's really cool. I didn't go over the words list, so let's go over the words list now. Okay, so we see that we don't have as many words this time. Let's see, there are like one, two, three, four, five times one, two, three, four. So 21 words, right? And it's not totally even, but it's kind of interesting. What can we see initially? Okay, we see that word summer again. It's repeated here. And here's pretty, and pretty is like summer. Here's hundred. Here's trees. Trees was in the last lesson. Let's see, cannot. Now, this is a compound word that can be turned into a contraction of can't. And you can explain that one. That's a good thing. Greater. So great is the root, and then we've add the suffix, added the suffix er, greater. Here's build. That's one of those weird words that has a U in it for some reason, and no one understands why. <laughs> Here's thick, the CK at the end, and talk about all the CK words, like black, hack, um, stick, you know, make. The long A, silent E. Walls. This is a plural of wall, right? So there are all kinds of fun things you can find. Here's count there. It's owl. Large. That's one of those things where when E follows G, it makes the G soft. So that's one. So there's all kinds of stuff in there. Okay. Now, um, about the moon. So that's lesson nine. So let me do it right this time and go over the, go over the uh, words first. <laughs> okay. So, uh, gently, renders, smell, sense, often, flying, unseen, sighing, appears, readers, distant, secure, summer, pleasure, evening, whispers, beautiful, rumbling, moonlight, wonderful, delightful, thanksgiving, sometimes, and slightest. Did you notice this leap we've made here? Almost all of these words are at least two or three syllables, two or three claps, let's say gently, renders. You see all of I think the only one clap words are smell and sense, which is interesting. Also, you'll see that like wonder, that's a three clap, wonderful. Moonlight. Now there's one of those GH words at the end. Moonlight. This is a compound word. It is moon and light. You can have your child try to find that for you. Uh, rumbling. There's an ing word. Let's see. Are there, there's sighing is another ing word. And it has the I-G-H, the I that, that says it has a GH that doesn't say anything. There's unseen. That's a prefix of un. 
Let's see, flying, there's another ing words, rumbling. I think I said that already. <laughs> okay, so there's some things, appears, two Ps and appears, that's something to remember. Delightful, there's moonlight and delight. See, the light is in the middle. So you have D and then light and then full. Thanksgiving, that's what we just did in, just recently. We just went through Thanksgiving. So thanks and giving, compound word. Sometimes, that's, that's one of those common words you have to know. Slight est. This is a, called a superlative. Like you can have slight, slider, and slightest. See, those comparatives and superlatives. So that's something you can go over. Okay, so I think that's enough for those words. Let's go over the lesson. Okay, about the moon. Oh, this is another one of those interesting ones, isn't it? So you could take this lesson and you could do an offshoot. You could actually learn the phases of the moon and do all kinds of stuff about the moon. It could be a lot of fun. Okay, the moon shines at night. Sometimes it looks like a bow that is bent, and sometimes it appears round. When it appears quite round, it is called the full moon. The moon does not give us as much light as the sun. It gives a mild and beautiful light and often renders the night very pleasant, when otherwise it would be dark and gloomy. Another thing, too, is you could then you could go over uh, Genesis 1, where God gave the sun to rule the day and the moon to rule the night. In summer, it is delightful to walk by moonlight. The air then is soft and refreshing. The winds play gently among the trees and shrubs. The little streams, as they flow on, catch the beams of the moon and seem to toss them about while children play with little toys. All around is still so that you can hear the slightest noise. The quivering of the leaves seems like the whispers of people nearby. The sighing of the winds in the grass appears like the voice of someone flying unseen through the air. The notes of a flute at a distance come to the ear with wonderful clearness. The rumbling of a wagon far off sounds near at hand, and the barking of the watchdog on the distant hill seems as if it were at the next house. How beautiful are the trees in the moonlight! Everything that is not pleasing is hidden by the darkness, and only that which is lovely comes to view. Thus, all that we see, all that we hear, all that we feel brings us pleasure in the serene moonlight. Oh, how the sense of smell is refreshed with the fragrance of flowers and the sweet scent of the new mown hay at this delightful season. I hope my little readers will think of these things and go forth and see if they are not true. When they find them to be so, I hope they will look up and give thanks unto him who has sent them the pleasure of the summer moonlight evening. Isn't that sweet? I love these lessons. Aren't they so godly and wonderful? And you know what? Children uh, naturally will want to know about these things. And when you can, and they naturally believe that God made them, they don't have any trouble with that, which makes it even more fun. So I hope this blesses you. Please like and subscribe, and I will try to have more of these out soon. Bye-bye.